food, fuel, blocks, iron, sugarcane. These five resources are essential to start a world properly and these five simple farms can produce them. Arguably, one of the most important resources is food and this piece of cooked steak I've got right here in my hand is one of the best food sources in the entire game. I'm still in shock because Minecraft still haven't nerfed the humble cow crusher in 1.20 because it is so overpowered. You really don't need many materials to build this. Everything you need is in this chest right here and you can take a screenshot of this right now or check in the description box later. You will of course need at least two cows to get the farm started and enough wheat to breed the cows. So let's break home the chest and start our build. So first dig out two blocks like so and then place a chest right here and a hopper leading into the back of the chest. Make sure you're crouching so you don't open the chest by accident. Then using the two temporary blocks, place one right here and place a slab in front of it. Now you can break this temporary block and build up around the hopper like so. Place one block here, that will serve to get you up and down from the farm. Place another temporary block here. Now it's time to get your cows in, so one by one, you're going to hold your wheat and load them into the hole. Now once you've got both cows in, place a fence gate right here and break this temporary block. Finally, coming over to this edge right here, you need to crouch and place a water bucket on top of that hopper. I should push the cows up and now your farm is active. All you need to do is hold your wheat, hold down right click and breed however many cows you have inside. Eventually, once you reach 24 cows in there, Minecraft will automatically entity cram them and the drops will end up in the chest. So now that you got a whole bunch of raw steak from your cow crusher, you need somewhere to smelt it. And more importantly, something to smelt it with. And the crazy thing is, lava can be used as fuel sources, smelting up to 100 items per lava bucket. So that's why this lava farm is extremely simple. Like, look at the materials for it. Of course, if you don't have 8 lava buckets right now, you will get more lava buckets while the farm is running. And since this does seem like a whole bunch of ice, stick around to the end of the video where I might solve that issue as well. So let's break on this chest and start our build. So just lay out your 8 cauldrons however you want. Place a temporary block and then a non-flammable block which you're going to cover all your cauldrons with. Making sure to leave a one block gap in between. Now place your pointed dripstone on the underside of these blocks and just pillar up like so and you can just create a border around the edge of this. Of course you can use any blocks for these, just make sure they're non-flammable. Now finally fill in this space with lava buckets just like so. Okay, so now that we've got that sorted, you can just break this and your farm is complete. Over time, these cauldrons will fill up with lava. You can just collect them, pop them into your smelter and you'll be good to go. Okay, so the next farm on our list is an automatic cobblestone or stone generator. Now, this is a farm that many people overlook, but it can be very, very useful as it lets you get stacks upon stacks of cobblestone and regular stone in just minutes. Now, in the materials, as you can see, you do need five lava buckets, which is why I do advise building the lava farm beforehand. Take a note of these materials let's break open the chest and start our build now ideally you'll want around this much space to build this farm so dig out two blocks and place a chest in there take five hoppers and by crouching lead them into each other just like so with the first hopper going into the top of this chest now place a temporary block here and a temporary block here and on each one place a stair facing inwards now in the middle connect these with three more stairs now at the end of this place another temporary block and at the back place a solid block and five more solid blocks next to these hoppers. Break that temporary block. Now it's worth noting that these blocks should be not flammable since there is going to be lava in this farm. Now on the stair closest to the chest place another temporary block and the slab on the upper half of the block just like so and waterlock these five stairs. So it should be looking like this right now. Finally grab your solid blocks again and build up around the farm one more block. Now in this space you just created, place your five lava buckets. All you need to do is crouch, stand on top of the chest, look at the stone block and just hold down left click. Now of course if you're not using silk touch, you will get cobblestone in the chest but once you get a pickaxe with the silk touch enchantment, you can harvest stone from this farm as well. Besides having enough materials to build your starter base, it is also crucial that you have the resources required to build a full enchant setup because that lets you get stuff like fortune 3 which will help getting diamond armor and stuff 
a whole lot easier. So that's why this automatic shaker in form design that does not require an observer is perfect for beginners because it lets you get the 200 bit stacks of shaker you need to build a full enchanting setup. All right, so the materials are in this chest as always. Check the description box below or take a screenshot, your choice. Also, this farm can be used with bamboo in place of sugar cane to turn this into a fuel farm as well. But let's break on the chest and start our build. So first, choose where you want the middle of the farm to be and dig down three blocks like so, making it two blocks wide. Now in this place, you're gonna place a double chest and a hopper leading into the double chest. Now on either side of the hopper, dig out four blocks. It might be worth replacing these eight blocks with some other non-naturally generating blocks such as these spruce planks because we are going to be placing redstone components on these and we don't want them getting like accidentally mined. So on either end, place a powered rail and power the rail and make sure the redstone torches you are placing are in the direction of the chest because we are going to have water on this side. So if you place a redstone torch there, it will get washed away. So make sure you are placing them in the direction of the chest. Now in the center, place your normal rails you can place your minecart hopper. Next, you need to place some blocks that sugarcane will grow on, for example, some dirt, sand, and dig a trench behind the line of dirt. Preferably at the center, you can place your water bucket and plant your sugarcane or your bamboo. Then place a temporary block behind the sugarcane and you can place a row of solid blocks. Each tile is three blocks wide, so that's why we made this a multiple of three. So imagine this is a three long section here. Place a piston in the center. Look at this three long section, place a piston in the center. So what you will have is something that looks like this. Three tiles, the piston in the center of each tile. Now fill in these spaces with some solid blocks and on top of all the solid blocks that you just placed, place pistons. Pillar up and fill in these blocks with some more solid blocks. Now on each of these solid blocks, place a redstone dust. Now you can jump back down and place three redstone torches on the top solid blocks and fill in the front of the farm with glass or any other solid block. On the sides, fill in with solid blocks and on the top, add a layer of solid blocks. As you can see, that activated all the pistons and the farm is primed. But if you ever get a situation like this, when a sugar cane reaches three blocks high without being cut off, there is a simple fix to that, which is coming over to the back and replacing the redstone dust. And that should fix the problem. Now, we're going to be moving on to one of the most useful farms they can build at any stage of your Minecraft world. As you can probably tell, the hopper, the rails, multiple hoppers here, the cauldrons up there, they all require an absurd amount of iron. And so this super simple iron farm design by enx 4 solves that issue by making this iron farm design incredibly easy for beginners to build. I'll link his original video down in the description below, so make sure you check that out. Alright, so the materials you need are in this chest. Of course, you can use any type of wood, and if you want an easy villager breeder design check this video right here as you can see it's really not that much and this iron farm produces over five stacks of iron per hour so with that being said let's break from the chest and start our build so for this farm you want to build this in a flat space that's approximately this big say for example i build the farm here some iron golems could spawn on this area right here instead of where we actually want them to spawn so make sure you got a large flat area like this and if you got any protrusions like this make sure you clear them out before building the farm but firstly dig a three wide trench that is seven blocks deep So counting from that block, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just like so. Now dig out these nine blocks and another nine blocks behind them. So you got a little three by three room inside here. Here you can place three beds, the color doesn't matter, and grab two slabs of your choice, place them on the lower halves of these blocks. Then take a trapdoor and place it on the upper half of the middle block. So when you close it down, it falls shut like that. Fold it shut and go under it like so. Then dig out these six blocks and the six blocks behind them. Now dig out these two blocks up here and these two blocks here. Place a torch where you're standing. This will prevent mobs spawning inside the farm which could kill the villagers. Now grab an empty boat of your choice and place it in between these two blocks just like so. Now make a staircase back up to the surface. On every other stair, place a torch. This is to prevent golems from spawning while we're getting the zombie in place. Once you reach the top of the staircase, block it off like so and add two trapdoors and open them up. 
it's easiest to get the zombie and the villagers in during night time. So while we're waiting for the sun to set, let's build a killing area for this farm. Now come back to the villager hole, leave one block and dig five blocks like so. And then towards the trap doors, dig out eight more blocks. Now you can dig out this entire space and dig this entire thing down one more block. Now on the opposite end to where you got your villager hole and your zombie hole, dig out these blocks. This is where you're going to place a chest and a hopper leading into the chest on this block here. Come over to this side and place an upside down stair like so. Make sure the stair is made out of a non-flammable block and then you can block this off here. Next get either a shovel or a hoe and you need to flatten out these eight grass blocks. And I'll place water in each of the two corners and everything should be flowing towards the hopper. Now we jump back in and place a sign on the stair right there, diagonally opposite, diagonally opposite. So you got this V shape. Now you have to crouch and place a sign on this sign and then come over to the side and place another sign on the edge of this one. Now if you place your lava in, it should be held completely in by these signs, but the iron golems can still pass through and enter the lava. Okay, now that it's night time, it's the perfect opportunity to get the villages and the zombie in place. And oh my god, these shaders are absolutely stunning. To get the villages into place, all you need to do is take a little tunnel down to the bottom where the beds are. Now, if you bring your villagers close to the farm, they should all pathfind to the beds. At this point, you can block this off and add a torch or two inside the farm and then block it off. To get your zombie in place, all you need to do is lower your zombie close to the farm and then stand on the other side of these trap doors and it should walk straight through and wait until the zombie goes inside the boat and as you can see, an iron golem spawned pretty much instantly. Now we need to quickly go down here and block off these blocks, especially this block right here. If an iron golem spawns there, it will instantly kill the zombie. Now you can remove these trap doors and your iron farm is complete. Because if we check the chest real quick, you can see that we got 5 iron and a poppy from the iron golem that just spawned. Again, all credits go to enx 4 for this super simple design. So if you're not specifically a Minecraft YouTuber, you can click away now. But for the small proportion of you who are watching my videos and make Minecraft videos, I am offering a thumbnail creation service on Fiverr. So if you're interested, check that out. And if you're still watching, check out this video where we make a villager breeder and a villager crop top.